you're all set to take your ACT or SAT test, which I'm sure many of you are. You go online to sign up and find that the nearest testing site is in the Twin Cities. This is an inconvenience, but hey, why not? You need to take it anyway. The night before the test brings six inches of snow. Due to the poor conditions, you must leave and get ready at 4.30 a.m. Then, on top of that, your father gets pulled over on the way to the testing site for having ice covering his license plate. Yet, this test will not specify any of this on your score report, and it could partly decide your future. I don't feel this is fair, especially since I went through this. The problem is that the use of standardized testing in the United States is ineffective at measuring students' knowledge. These tests do not capture a student's true ability. As found in an article published in Time Magazine on October 11, 2012, these tests favor certain groups of students over others. Minorities are statistically performing at a lower level than, than Caucasian and Asian students. Lower income students lack access to resources to be successful as students in the middle and upper classes. Time Magazine also stated that first generation college students, college applicants, have no precedence to follow and are performing at a much lower level as a result. As said by the Denver Post newspaper printed March 3, 2013, Standardized tests do not support creative thinking. Outside the box thinking is not supported by the entirely multiple choice test. Students' own opinions and thoughts cannot be expressed except mildly on the essay portion, but students are given a prompt so they cannot choose one that they are passionate about. The New York Times reported on April 14, 2013 that testing on a single date is inaccurate at measuring a student's knowledge. Students may be sick or not feeling their best on that date. Other external or internal issues may be consuming a student's mind on the testing date and affect their scores. The inaccuracies can be detrimental for students and teachers and force many to consider extreme options. USA Today reported in their May 27, 2008 issue that some students and teachers have resorted to cheating to compensate for an inevitable low scores. The New York Times printed on April 2, 2013 that a cheating scandal in Atlanta, Georgia has led to the firing of many teachers after they helped minority and less privileged students with their testing. As reported in the Washington Post newspaper, on March 17, 2013, teachers' pay is tied to student scores on state tests in some school districts. This has led to the boycott of standardized testing this year in the Seattle School District and has led to the firing of many teachers there as well. As stated in the New York Times, students may not reach their full potential with these tests. Scoring low on these tests, despite having a wealth of knowledge, could mean den being denied acceptance to a university or college or program of a student's choice. Other students may be restricted to certain schools or colleges that won't cater to the needs that they have or allow the same opportunities as other more elite schools. We need to instate a law regulating the amount of standardized testing students take each year. Students may not take more than one standardized test per year nationwide after the year 2014. This would mean that standardized testing would be absent from the junior year curriculum to allow for students to take the ACT or SAT test. Students who take multiple tests each year by choice would be exempt from this law. This regulation could then be enhanced over time to include restricting the ACT and SAT tests to slowly move away from standardized testing altogether. This would be enforced by the United States Department of Education and penalties for violating these regulations would be the confiscating of student scores from the testing organization, organization or state so they cannot be utilized. This regulation would eliminate many of the issues that are part of standardized testing. Limiting the amount of standardized tests that students take would eliminate a large portion of stress that many students face. Any biases that come about from these tests, such as being a minority or low income, would be eliminated or entirely disregarded on college ap applications. This law would eventually eliminate these inaccurate tests altogether. If this law is put in place, students' lives will improve drastically. There would be more equal opportunity for college admissions, and if a student had a bad day on their testing day, it would not affect their admission chances. Admissions would be based on a more broad spectrum of items, such as classes or school activities or extracurriculars, and minorities and low-income students would be at a level playing field. Stress levels for students would go way down. There would be less pressure put on one single item or test and more on multiple items, as I said, such as extracurricular, extracurriculars or sports and that kind of activities. With your help, these regulations can become a reality. I urge you to contact Al Franken. This Minnesota senator can be contacted at 320-251-2721 or by visiting his website at franken.senate.gov to send him an email about this issue. 
Please inform them of the inaccuracies and problems that standardized testing causes and ask them to consider the, le the legislation that I have suggested. I'm asking you to help create a more fair system for the next generation of students.